Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this week's episode. I'm Katie and behind the camera is my guy Stefan and together we're Trella Shop. Trella Shop is a vintage furniture flipping business and we're taking vintage on the road. That's going to be a whole lot easier now because Stefan and I bought an RV. We're full-time RVers and this is our RV Aurora Blue. If you would like to watch an RV tour video, you can click the link above. We're going to be traveling the country and taking vintage by storm, selling all the vintage goods and all the furniture flips to you guys. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can follow along our creative journey. You can also like and comment on our videos. It is so helpful to us. Other ways in which you can support Trello Shop include making a donation through Venmo or buy me a coffee. You can also click a, an affiliate link down below. We have items listed from today's video, which is making over this vintage record cabinet. If you want to see the after on this beauty, stay tuned because we're about to get painting. on just a few main categories for each project. We have cleaning, painting, and finishing. Now, don't be afraid to lose track of the items we're using because there's going to be affiliate links down below so you can purchase some of these items and follow along and paint for yourself if you'd like to. All right, Stefan helped me put this piece on its back. That way I can take the legs off. A lot of mid-century pieces, the legs come out really easily. And for me, I like to take them off. That way I can focus on finishing them later. And that way I can truly get to cleaning and prepping this piece. All right. Now you're probably thinking like, this isn't a very functional way to work on a project piece, right? It's not. That's why I'm actually gonna prop it up on some paint cans. Be right back. I like having a piece elevated from whatever work surface I'm working on. There's little cones you can buy and I use those for smaller pieces. You'll see me work using them later. But for something like this, using some paint cans is perfect. It gets it lifted up off the table. That way I can get all the way around it and also, I can set these aside to work on later in between on my dry time. It'll be a lot easier polishing this metal and cleaning them up when they're not attached and I'm not having to dig around underneath, so it works out. When you get a vintage furniture piece, you don't really know what life it's had before you purchasing it or who owned it. And that's really part of the mystique of vintage furniture um, is thinking of like, all the, the life that has been in this cabinet. So those memories and those thoughts are super cool, but the gunky stains, the odors, those things you don't want sticking around. 
So I always like to, you know, start off any furniture project by giving it a good clean. I keep one of these brushes in my car, actually, and then I have one in my kit. Uh, you're able to just go around, give it a brushing. Underneath on a lot of furniture pieces, there will be cobwebs, and sometimes you get little daddy long legs, those kinds of things. I gave it a nice sweep out underneath before we got started, but having one of these is so handy. Another tool you could use instead of like a fancy long brush, just an outdated paintbrush. Um, let's say the bristles have gone awry and it's not really the most functional anymore. That's okay, you can use it to brush out. And I set in with my cred cutter because I want to degrease this. Also, once I set in and start cleaning it, I'll be able to kind of tell where the parts are that I'm gonna need to pay attention to. If it does need um, some goo gone or if it needs some paint stripping something, uh, it's a good opportunity to learn what's going on with your piece. I've already checked out this piece quite a bit. I've been waiting to sink my teeth into it. And so I know that there really aren't any gunky points on this furniture piece. Uh, whoever painted it before didn't do the best job. So it's gonna be getting some sanding here in a little bit, but we'll talk about that once we get to our prepping phase. All right, now that we're done cleaning our vintage furniture piece, we're gonna get prepping. To get started, I'm going to tape off some bits inside. I'm going to be painting the outer shell and this inner lip, but I don't want any paint to transfer inside the cabinet. So I'm gonna make sure I tape that off and that way I can get a nice clean line. There we go. That looks good. Next, I'm gonna be sanding. So whoever had set out to paint this before didn't do the best paint job. Uh, if you come a little closer, you can actually see where they had started painting the top portion of this and to see how easily this paint is peeling up. I'm just peeling it up with my fingernails. I got a nice chunk off earlier. This is what I'm talking about in regards to durability of your painted furniture piece. We don't want to be fascinated with peeling up old paint. <laughs> so we properly clean and prep our piece. So I have a few items I might be using today. Um, I have both sanding blocks and my DeWalt sander. I prefer to just use a sanding block they're so easy to use. They're pretty much foolproof. But we'll just kind of have to see whether or not this is enough to get it what it needs to be. I'm putting in a fair bit of elbow grease with my sanding block, but it's not quite cutting it. I'm using a 60 grit sanding block, which is pretty coarse. And I can see where it's making a difference and it's affecting the top of my furniture piece, but it's gonna take me quite a while to, to really get all of this off. So I'm gonna add some extra brute force by whipping out my DeWalt sander. These are the same grit. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> took me for a wild ride there for a minute. Oh, I can feel all the vibrations in my fingertips. This is when one of those brushes come in really handy. You can check on the status of your sand 
can see I missed a few spots, so I'm gonna run over it again real quick. Awesome. All right. Now we've gotten that top layer of paint off on our vintage record cabinet. I've made a total mess. <laughs> Pro tip, don't use your sander inside your house. What up party people? Life gives you lemons. You make vintage furniture. This is our current filming setup. We've had lawn folks come in and disturb our our film set today. Lawn folks and weather, Florida weather. Yes, and uh, also cranky equipment. Um, that did not like lawn folks or cranky the hot weather. <laughs> so we're bringing things inside to the RV right now and going to keep working on our vintage record cabinet because um, a couple of little challenges can't stop us. That's right. Because a challenge is an opportunity to overcome. <laughs> All right. Um, I think these will do. At this point, my sunglass lenses are so ingrained with sunscreen and bug spray and sweat, it's hard to see out of them. And with our fancy light here in the RV, I need them. All right, here we go. So as you can see, we've had a change in scenery. <laughs> uh, project's not going exactly according to plan. We've had some delays today, uh, some little setbacks. We've had lawn folks come on in We've had uh, some inclement weather come on in, some cranky inclement Florida weather. And so we've had to bring our paint project inside to the RV. So that's what this whole journey is about, right? We're taking vintage on the road. That means we need to be flexible and be able to take our vintage record cabinet inside to finish painting it. Thankfully, before the bad weather set in, we were able to finish sanding it. Um, I refuse to sand inside. Well, that's not completely true. I've done it before. I just really don't like it, especially in such a small space as the RV. Uh, sand can get everywhere, and I just don't want to deal with that inside our RV right now. So I made a point to finish sanding outside. Um, I used my DeWalt hand sander to get off the rough, uh, rough spots, and then I was able to come back in with both an 80 grit and uh, 120 grit sanding blocks. The 80 really kind of finished taking off some of those rough points. The 120 made it super nice and smooth. And that's really what the problem was with this cabinet. It was cute. It was all right. You could have bought it at the thrift store and chunked it in a corner in your house and it would have been fine. But it wasn't living up to its potential, right? So uh, part of that problem was just that the paint job on it was so bad. So we got it smoothed up and ready for painting and for the next part of the process. I uh, also sanded the doors and took off the hardware for that. And um, <sighs> we're gonna keep on going. So you can see I have the legs here on the table and I'm gonna go ahead and finish them up. Uh, earlier I had the furniture piece propped up on the paint cans and that was working great, but I just, you know what? I just want to get the legs done. I want to put the legs on. And I want it to sit here so you guys can see it while I work on it and get a true vision for what it's going to look like. So I'm going to do those. So this would be part of our prepping process. And do, 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 I'm going to use my handy dandy restore finish. So this is, gosh, every furniture flipper saving grace. This is awesome. Um, basically, it is a like it's a fix all for your wood stuff. It nourishes the wood. It helps you buff out any scratches, um, like superficial scratches. Um, it de 
adds some color to it. It just makes it like this lustrous look. It makes your wood look really healthy. And so, um, you know, it's good wood maintenance, even in your own home. If you already own some beautiful wood pieces, you know, every so often, you know, uh, take a rag and your restore a finish and just kind of buff over your piece and it'll add a whole new level of awesomeness to your, your space. So anyway, this stuff is awesome. It comes in different colors, so you can match it to any of the wood pieces you're working on. This is a walnut color and it's a, you're able to use it on a variety of woods. Um, so yeah, you can color match, but if you have something and you're like, gee whiz, I only have walnut and really I need golden oak. That's okay, use your walnut. But do you see right now, I put a little bit of this restore finish on my rag and I'm just going over this wooden leg and look at how it's just taking out some of the superficial scratches and it's really making it shine. It looks so much healthier. Check this out. So this is our before and this is our after. Like what a world of difference. And that took literally two seconds. So I highly recommend getting a can of this. Whatever wood furniture you have at the house, get the color, keep it on hand, you know, Polish out your furniture before the holidays. Your family will be so impressed. So two things take it next level. One, we're actually going to seal the wood legs. We can add this feed and wax, which um, it's a beeswax. You can use that over the restore finish uh, to further protect and enhance the wood. And it's a great way to make sure that your wood stays healthy and uh, you won't need to restore or finish them up, polish them up as often. So let's see. I have a fresh bottle here. And I've had it sitting outside with me today, so it's rather liquidy. This is just a lint-free t-shirt rag, by the way. I'll buy them by a giant bulk box. Um, and they're awesome to have for cleaning, for staining furniture, um, for doing this, like polishing wood. And literally, that's all it is. Look, I just put a little bit of that on here. And this is now Glorious. I don't know if you guys can see that. I feel like a fancy YouTube makeup artist. Do you see my makeup brush? It's beautiful. <laughs> anyway, that's all it takes. Literally, that's all it takes. And next, we're going to use a little bit of metal polish. Let's see. So I thought... I grabbed my Brasso because that's what I use to polish out my, my brass. And it also works on other metals. Um, okay, yep, this is good. So Brasso, quite similarly to the wax, I'm just gonna put a little dab on my cloth. Let me find a clean corner. Here we go. Put a little dab on my cloth and polish it in to the barrel on the wood leg. This should clean up some of the rust and scratches and give it a nice shine. All right, I'm happy with that. All right, I'm just gonna take a clean rag and go over these. to absorb any extra, extra furniture polish. There we go. Beautiful. I'm gonna put these safely out of the way. Actually, I'm gonna put them back on the piece. Let's do it. <laughs> oh man.
We cleaned it. We prepped it. We cleaned it some more and prepped it some more. I think we are able to get painting. I'm gonna set this up like this. We're having to be flexible right now. We're painting in a RV, a 36 foot Coachman Aurora RV. And that means we have to figure it out. Let's see. Earlier I had talked about little mini cones to put down to help as a, like a lift for when you're working on projects. These are my little mini cones and they're great for something like this. I bet these probably could have held this up, but whatever. You can use what you have around. These I happen to have around. Um, but look, that's awesome. I can get the lips and I don't have to worry about leaning it and drying it any such a way. And, um, and actually the inside, like the backside, I don't have to worry about painting at all because the way the doors are on this, it doesn't open up. I just gotta get the outside all pretty. So painting for today, I'm gonna be using some Dixie Bell chalk paint. I've been painting with them for years, um, or using their paint products for years. They're actually like a local Florida company and I always love to support local, but also they have a great quality paint. So I'm gonna be painting with their paint today. Just giving it a pretty little shake. I also use these jumbo popsicle sticks. They're great for stirring up paint. We have holy guacamole and palmetto. These are two of my favorite colors, especially this palmetto. I have bought so many of the 32 ounce jars of this and painted so many projects with this. It's a great mixing color also. Um, just FYI, let's see. Do you love it? I love it. <laughs> All right, so I'm showing you two totally different colors and you're probably thinking, what the heck are you, what's going on, Katie? What are you thinking? Um, I'm totally wanting to do a like two-toned, cool, groovy, uh, little vintage record cabinet here. So I'm wanting to do the palmetto on the outer shell and this holy guacamole on the doors. And that'll be so cute with original hardware. Like, check that out. Beautiful. I need to polish that up too. I almost forgot. We'll do that in a bit. So these popsicle sticks you can get at, through our Amazon affiliate link, through your local home supply store. Also, probably your kid's art box. So if you have an opportunity to snag a couple, go for it. That's looking beautiful. All right, we're diving in. Hole guacamole, let's do it. <sighs> oh yeah, oh my gosh, I love this. Mm, it's so pretty. That's looking pretty. And we're gonna do the next one. How's it looking? I know on camera they're looking awful green. <laughs> I'm excited. Okay. I'm gonna let those dry for a while and I'm gonna get painting the piece. All right guys, the last time I saw ya, things looked a little different. We were hanging out inside the RV. This thing was naked. <laughs> a lot has happened since we last hung out. So to catch you up to speed, 
um, I've been working on this piece. I wanted to keep to our filming schedule and that meant getting some stuff done while y'all weren't looking. So what I've done that you did not see is I finished painting the doors for this vintage record cabinet. I did a couple coats of that holy guacamole and between, um, between uh, paints, coats of paint, I did a light sanding with my 120 grit. That way we would have a super smooth surface to work with. And in the end, it just makes for such, such a nice finished piece. So I did do that. I think I ended up doing two solid coats on the doors for this cabinet. And I got started painting the body of this record cabinet. It's painted in Palmetto. And I think I ended up doing a little bit more paint wise to the body of this piece than I did the doors, just because there's so much more surface than the doors. So um, as I would paint, I'd go back, smooth out my brush strokes or little bits, and I'd come back in and um, <laughs> I'd have to just touch up a little dab here, and a little dab there, and that's all right. I finally got to a point where I was happy with it and I just let it dry. I wanna make sure that this piece has had some good dry time before sealing it. I also took the opportunity to polish up some hardware. I forgot to do that yesterday while we were hanging out, so I had to get that done hardware on a piece of furniture is like wearing jewelry. It accentuates the piece. It's a finishing touch. You really want to make sure you get the right kind. So something like this, the original really speaks true to the character and quality of this vintage record cabinet. So all it needed was a bit of polishing and cleaning up and it looks fantastic. And now I am waxing the body of this vintage record cabinet. I'm going around with my tried and true zebra brush and just dipping my brush in my can and applying it, it on top of the dry paint surface. I'm getting an even coat all the way around you know, some people, they prefer to take their rag, dip it in, and rub it in. Um, I like putting it on with a brush. I like seeing where it's going. I think it applies really nicely, and it's worked really well for me. I will go back with a lint-free rag later on for cleanups, and then also, Depending on the color that I'm using, I might um, wipe around the edges or um, actually buff in the wax more too. This is a darker color. So um, as I apply the wax, I'm also leaving clean brush strokes. I'm not like going all crazy, crazy with my brush because I want my brush strokes to be smooth and I'm gonna let it hang out without rubbing in with the rag. That way it kind of hardens all on its own and it sets all on its own. And um, once I get a couple layers of wax, I'm, I'll you know, go over it with a rag. But anyway, it's just this weird thing that I like to do. I feel like it helps eliminate streaks and lint spots. I hate having lint spots from a rag in my fresh paint job. There are not so many things that make me as angry as that. I get real cranky. <laughs> So I'm just going over all my painted spots. We're just about finished with this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the hardware back on these doors.
and there she is in her shining glory. This is our vintage record cabinet makeover, and I think she's stunning. We did two colors here. We polished up the hardware. We polished and sealed the legs. All of it got coated in an awesome solid coat of wax, and it's ready for a forever home. So now, after this, Stefan and I are gonna post this online, and you guys have the opportunity to buy this. Uh, we won't put it live until you know what, let's do that. We won't put this live until our video is live. And then hopefully next week's episode, we can update with you with the status of this piece, where it went and the happy home it's going to. So stay tuned, make sure you follow along, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and um, that way you can keep track of this awesome piece and all the ones com to come in the future. So if you had a fun time checking all this stuff out, if you wanna get some of your own products, Check out those affiliate links down below. We have all sorts of items used today that would really help you get your painting kit started. Um, I had fun, I hope you did too. Thank you so much for painting with me. Trello shop. Trello shop! Out. Come in here, come here, come here, come here. Mwah. It's our first RV flip. Woohoo! RV furniture flip. It's our baby, it's, it's so baby. cute. It's beautiful, so cute. Beautiful. Okay, but really, um, this isn't completely dry yet, and I want to get okay. the doors out so they don't get chipped. Let's yeah. do it before it rains. Bye. Right. Take that, YouTube. Vintage hits the road. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, 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 uh. Uh. <laughs> All right, cut.